Mark, you've said that astronomy is still the subject of cosmology and faith, and I think you, you argue that Psalm 19 gives us some indication that that is the case. Well, yes, Psalm 19 says that the heavens declare the glory of God. So when you look at the heavens as an astronomer, you do astronomy, uh, somehow or immediately the question comes up not only from what does it look like, but where does it come from? And for many, the answer is then God. You've also written that the work of his hands should lead us to himself um, long before we turn and we wander towards pure science. How did you reconcile that with your colleagues uh, when you were at the University of Utrecht uh, and also when you were at the Armagh uh, Ast uh, Observatory? Um, could they in any way consider that you were a singular and a very focused scientist if that was your, your situation? Well, I was both a focused scientist and a focused Christian. Um, and it's not too difficult, I think, to, to be both. Because when you, when you do science, you can be devoted to the scientific inquiry because it's not only because you do it because you like it or because you must in order to get your pay, but also because you see the, the link towards the dimension of God and therefore it has a double meaning. It, it has an astronomical and a faith meaning. Did anybody ever question that you were serving two masters, uh, the scientist and God? No, there, there was never a question and I never asked them why there was no question, but I perceived that they found that I was dedicated as much to the one as to the other and my dedication to astronomy helped my colleagues to do their work too. So, therefore, was there a, a conflict between the, the, the biblical uh, background that you had and the biblical teaching and the fact that your work involved understanding that the beginning of time was the Big Bang 13.8 thousand million years ago? Uh, well, no, there wasn't really. Um, astronomers are specialists nowadays. They work in a very small field of, of the universe. Um, my specialty was in hot stars, uh, how they uh, are formed, how they behave and so forth. Um, I, had, I was never an expert in cosmology, although of course I knew the basics. Um, and it, it took me a long time during my career before I had, uh, with my faith, sorted out how to approach the whole matter of origins, cosmology. Um, and it was only after that I had some peace with the subject myself that I was able to talk about it to others and so forth. But there was this conflict. Scientists work in biology and chemistry, physics, mathematics, nuclear force, gravity, particles, atoms, protons, um, all very, very, as you say, clearly defined um, concepts. Um, and yet you believe that all this relies on an intelli on intelligent design. The matter of origin, yes, would be a matter of intelligent design, as far as I'm concerned. But when you when you look at how a star behaves, what you have to do, what you have to work with, is is the laws of nature. Yeah. Now, for me, the laws of nature are a matter of intelligent design. Um, I mean, the, the creator has. Um, put order in his universe by putting down a number of rules according to which matter shall behave. Uh, for others, these rules might be innate in matter. Uh, that, that, there is no, 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 no conflict, because when I look at uh, how, how the laws of nature work, I see the creator at work. It's so as simple as that, for me. So there's no conflict between what many would see as a concrete concept and an abstract concept. I mean, how do you, how do you defi define the um, intelligent designer? No, the, the, I don't think we can separate between concrete and abstract abst uh, concepts, because the concept that the laws of nature would be innate in matter is also abstract. Um, how I define the creator is, is a different question. Um, for me, that is a matter of reading the Word of God, where it says, He created everything. We do not know exactly how He created, although you can, you can read a few verses in the Psalms that, that have something to say, but 
the details escape us. Uh, in a way, the study of astronomy uh, helps us to understand something about how he might have gone about his creative work. Okay, so the intelligent designer, you've described what you think is the, uh, the who. But the one thing that theology doesn't do um, is it dis doesn't help us to understand how. Um, in the Bible, there are no facts, there's no proof. Um, when, when you talk about the origin of matter, uh, that is at the basis of everything there is, then science does, does not give a very good answer about the how either. Um, uh, matter was either always there, or matter came fought out of a field, uh, some kind of forces, and, and it, it becomes very vague the farther, the farther back to the origin you go. And so, uh, in both situations, you end up in the land of faith. But can you understand why people of faith become very confused, that uh, they have many questions that they want to ask about how our world was created, how our universe, our cosmos was created. Of course, everybody wants, wants to know. I mean, your mommy tells you that you're, you were born somewhere with her, and, and, but you want to go much further than that, and, and, and where does everything come from? Um, but the, 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 the exact uh, mechanism by which this happens um, may be clear in, in, the, in, in the case of a person, but in the case of the universe, where we can no longer observe how it was done, um, we can only work back from what we know here. But the time span is so long and the, the process is so complicated that we have no complete answer. We stand here in front of Darwin's birthplace and uh, there is this, this um, conflict between the creationist and the evolutionist. Um, but he actually set out on the Beagle in 1831 um, with an open mind, didn't he? The inquiring mind of a scientist. Yes, he did. But um, the, the open mind of any person um, is, is a tricky thing to, to live with. Um, the open mind may accept impressions from from the world around us um, that may or may not be inspired by the creator who has all the answers. And so we may arrive at different answers that may not reveal the complete truth. You say the creator has all the arg uh, answers. I mean, Darwin recognized that he wanted to support his arguments and his theories with scientific fact. It could be said that the, uh, the Christian is, is denied the, the luxury of having fact, truth. No, I don't think so, because um, um, I, I can talk about uh, how uh, matters, uh, particles interact with each other, yes? And, and I, I can use those facts to say, I mean, this is, this is a very clever thing. But let me give you an illustration. You, you probably admire the inventor of Lego. You have played with it yourself when you were a boy. You, uh, you have somewhere in the attic, you have still a box with all the stuff. And, and there are many pieces, different colors, different shapes, etc. The creator created a very small number of elementary particles, less than 30, yeah? out of which everything else has been made. Now, Mr. Lego, couldn't do that. And we are admiring him for doing a much bigger thing with much many more particles. I mean, the creator used only less than 30 pieces and everything from DNA to stars to galaxies to the grass that grows here is made out of it. That is fantastic. That is intelligent design. Where do you think Darwin actually stands in the great pantheon of, of great scientists? Um, his theory of the evolution, as, as you accept, I know, uh, forms the basis of modern biology. Yes, um, and, and he, he, he did that in a, in a scientific way. He went out into nature, he observed, he made notes, and then he sat down and, and interpreted what he had seen. But I think he made one mistake. Um, the prophet Isaiah 
um, challenges us, and I feel very much challenged as an astronomer, because he said, look up at the stars and see who made these. Now, the word who is the crucial word. You see, if you put the, the first letter at the end, it says how. If you, are, if you say, look at the stars and see how they were made, you have a scientific question. If you read it as it originally is, who, you have a theological question. And I think you should start with the theological question. Get the one who knows the, those answers, get him on board before you start your science. Darwin did not do that. Yes, many of Darwin's theories and observations have now been been devalued um, but of course the same can be said of a lot of Hebrew scripture that we now have a different totally different interpretation um, put on it and many of the evolutionists would say that uh, the Christian faith is is built on sand no I wouldn't agree with that of course <laughs> um, the, the, the word of God on which the Christian faith is built yeah, and, and the, the revelation of God uh, in his word and in his son who, who lived among us, although it's a long time ago. Um, you see, the scriptures do contain enough to build confidence in what they say. Um, there is a lot of history that is confirmed uh, by chronicles, by archaeology. There have been things that for years have been unknown to the, to the world of history, only after centuries to be dug up out of the earth somewhere. Um, the prophecies in the Bible, I mean, where the, the succession of nations over, over millennia uh, is clearly foretold and that we can now look upon and say, this is not an ordinary book produced by people. There is, there is a, a, a bigger mind behind it. You know that one constant criticism of Christianity is it's dabbling with the supernatural, and that is certainly not very scientific. No, it is not. Um, but that is because, you see, the paradigm of science, the, the, the worldview of science on which all scientific activity is based, yeah, says that all there is, all there ever was and all there ever will be is matter, time and motion. Um, and there is no influence in the natural world from outside it. That means science has excluded the supernatural by definition, before they started to work even. Now, if there is something real in, in, in the existence of the supernatural, then you are building a picture of, of nature that is, by definition, incomplete. Yeah, uh, there are many, many uh, things happening around us where we wonder: can this always be explained in a natural way? And I think the answer is no. You've spent a lifetime in the world of science. During your 18 years at the Armagh University, was there never a time when you ever questioned? the idea that the world may have been created in seven days? No, not really. Um, I must say, I, I had a very, I had quite a firm conviction that the seven days was, the, was right, that there were seven literal 24-hour days. Um, it, 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 took me, it took me many years before I had reconciled that idea with the picture of, uh, of science. But you see, in my opinion, the Bible does not say that the whole universe was made in seven days. Um, the, the, very, the very first verse of the Bible talks about God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. For me, in the beginning is a period before that, that week of seven days in the, uh, where creation happened. Uh, how long that period is, the Bible doesn't say. Uh, science suggests to me that it would be 13.8 billion years or thereabouts. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hung up on that, on that exact number because I, I can see there are, are a few problems with it. 
but uh, there is there is time before day one when the light came, when all kind of things have happened. Uh, that's how I, I mean, after after a bit of a headache uh, and many years, I, I was able to put it together. So what do you do then when an inquirer comes to you and says, where is heaven? Um, if I were to give, if I were trying to give a geographical location of where heaven is, um, I, I would be embarking on the impossible. Um, you see, the creator of the universe um, is not necessarily contained within his creation. And so the, the dwelling place of God or heaven is not something that you can say it is a, a million miles uh, behind Andromeda. Um, it, it's something that is outside this universe, uh, not, not contained in it. So, in a way, it's a bad question. The splitting of the, the atom at Los Alamos uh, is claimed to be science's greatest greatest achievement to date, um, but they're still investigating dark matter and uh, dark energy. Um, can you see a day when scientists will ever uh, present irrefutable evidence about the beginnings of the, the cosmos? And, and if they do, will that tell us exactly when moment zero was? Well, it is dangerous to say that I would never believe it could be, uh, because many things have happened uh, to the contrary. But um, I, 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 have, I have a conviction that it will not happen. Um, our going back to the beginning yeah, it can be done very far. We can come very close to moment zero. But there is, as we understand it now, there is a physical limit whereby you cannot penetrate in the very f smallest first fraction of a second. And, and the answer to, to the question of origin lies within that very f little fraction that we can penetrate. And so, I mean, it, it, it is maybe a bit silly to say we can never penetrate it because so many things have happened. But it, it, is, a, it is a limit that, that science itself imposes as far as we know, understand science today. And so I think it is impossible, at least very difficult, and it, it will certainly not be in my days. Is there something inside you that says, I hope scientists never solve that final mystery? Because that would do a lot of harm to people's faith and to creationist theory. Um, it would not harm my faith and I hope it wouldn't harm the fate of others because if we solve that problem I think we will still be able to recognize the hand of the Creator in it.